My name is Zoltán Nagy. I'm coming from Budapest, Hungary, and I've been working uh, in the uh, Medical University, Semmelweis University of Budapest, Department of Ophthalmology, and I've been working as an ophthalmologist for 25 years. I was uh, one of the first who performed uh, femtor laser cataract surgery in the world, so I did the first case in August 2008. Since I did several hundreds of uh, cases, so it's, uh, the number is above 1,000 so far, and it was a very interesting technology from the beginning, I would say. The advantage of femtosecond uh, laser cataract surgery is that it's a laser-based uh, new technology and the results are uh, very consistent compared to the previous 20-year-old, uh, around 20-year-old uh, manually uh, driven uh, phaco amusification. With the laser technology we are able uh, to do a very round and circle capsular axis in the desired size and desired location so the centration is not a problem anymore. It's very important because all the advantage of the premium lenses can be used by this way efficiently. Uh, compared to the manual uh, technology, uh, we were able to do the same size of the intended capsular axis only in 10% of the cases. Uh, with the femtolaser it was 100%. The laser also helps with the fragmentation of the crystalline lens in harder cataracts and in softer cataracts it uh, helps with liquefying the lens so we don't have to use phaco energy to remove the center part, so the nucleus of the lens. In harder lenses the laser makes the pre-chopping uh, for the ophthalmologist so we also don't have to use phaco energy to do the cut, the two main cut within the lens. Then we just grab with the phaco head uh, the lens and then with a, a certain chopper it's easy to split the lens into two and then into four quadrants and then by this way we can spare about 53% phaco energy at the end of the surgery. So from safety point of view it's also very helpful. And the third advantage of this technology that we are able to uh, create the corneal wound also with this technology with the desired size and location of the corneal wound and the results are also very consistent compared to the manual technology before. I think the shift for femtolaser technology is easier because uh, uh, it's autom automatized uh, many, many steps. At the beginning, uh, the procedure was slower, of course, than the normal manual phaco amusification. But when the personnel and also me as the surgeon and the uh, patient got familiar with the method, then it really speeded up because now it takes about between 45 and uh, 50 seconds to do all the three steps, so the capsular axis, fragmentation and the corneal wound. And actually it spares time because you don't have to use the blade, uh, you don't uh, have to use the needle to create uh, the capsular axis and also you can spare with the viscoelastic material. So on the long term it spares time but of course you need to be through the learning curve. Uh, special instrumentation is needed for the fragmentation of the lens and also opening uh, the corner wound. This new technology needs some new instrumentation and also uh, the organization of the OR. The femtolaser could be either put in the main OR or outside the OR. So for opening the corner wound I use the slate spatula which is a narrow spatula with a specific end and so by this uh, instrument it's easier to enter the anterior chamber uh, if the cut is complete and perfect. And uh, then we do not lose uh, from the aqueous by this way and it's possible to fill up uh, the anterior chamber with the uh, vitreous. So uh, with the ordinary blunt spatula which I used before it's uh, not very uh, good for opening this wound because they are thicker than it should be. So the slate spatula is really thinned but it's not sharp. Sharp is, uh, should be avoided because it can create another wound 
and which is uh, not a, a wanted procedure. So for facilitating the fragmentation of the crystalline lens, I designed a new chopper, which has some bend, and also the end uh, has been modified and changed uh, fr uh, compared to the available choppers. Uh, it is uh, sharper, but not sharp, and has a triangle uh, form at the end. Uh, and this is very suitable by this small angularization or angle uh, when you create uh, the normal wound uh, to enter into the fragmentation line and without using any phaco energy just to chop the lens into two uh, uh, halves and then uh, turning around the lens into four quadrants. So I found it very useful and uh, I use almost exclusi exclusively this type of chopper in uh, among my patients uh, with harder cataracts. With softer cataracts it's uh, not needed. With uh, softer cataracts I use a blunt uh, tipped uh, chopper because then I'm able to lift out from the capsular sac uh, the uh, lens part and then it's easy to remove uh, with the simple INA or with the FACO head without using really FACO energy. So I think I would recommend this chopper for the others to implement and to use. So for implanting the posterior chamber lens I use the Royal uh, single-handed injector which is I think very good and uh, for smaller uh, wounds you can uh, use it as a wound assisted uh, technology of course, but with larger uh, wounds you can use it as you used it before. So I think it's uh, suitable and, uh, and uh, no problem during the surgery. Surgeons might expect uh, a bigger uh, uh, epinucleus during femtal laser cataract surgery. Epinucleus has a protecting role uh, against damaging the posterior capsule. But what I noticed that it needed a bit uh, different removal with the INA uh, techniques. Sometimes we have the same experience with uh, high myops and high hyperops uh, just operating with the uh, traditional phaco emulsification techniques. Uh, I think because we uh, now uh, minimizing the corner of wound, we need another INA uh, technology with the uh, some firms providing uh, with the uh, artificial material uh, tipped uh, INA and this is very good but it should be set properly uh, on the end of the INA uh, device. Uh, but other way I think uh, so far there's not so big change compared to the uh, previous technology. I think there are many surgeons who doubt that we really need the femtosecond uh, technology in cataract surgery. I think they doubt until the time when they try uh, the femtolaser technology. Of course, it's an expensive technology as uh, all new technology uh, are. Uh, Fake emulsification was also expensive 20 years ago and uh, there were a quite steep and long learning curve to uh, do the efficient and safe surgery and I think during the ASCRS and during the AO uh, conferences there have been many courses to teach the colleagues for this new technology. Four years ago I was the only one who used this technology and uh, when we presented in the international congresses the room uh, was fully packed so I think there's a big interest from the colleagues and also from the press. There were many people uh, and now the technology is used by uh, hundreds of surgeons and uh, I think at the moment more than 100 uh, femtolaser equipment sold all over the world. So the technology based on our work and research uh, have been approved by the FDA already in 2009. 
uh, and the commercial uh, sale of the uh, machines started in 2010 and 2011, parallel in Europe and also in the United States and other parts of the world like Asia and uh, Australia. So I think uh, the number of surgeons are gradually increasing. Uh, whoever used this technology, I, I heard uh, no problems uh, with the technology. Of course, there is a learning curve and uh, some things should be changed in the practice and uh, the OR personnel should be educated, but I think uh, it's worse at the end to do these uh, changes and uh, then the results, I, I think the main uh, aim of the surgery that we operate younger and younger patients. Uh, they want better and better results, expect better be and better results and also we use uh, better and better technology IOS. So the steps of the surgery should be standardized and this technology helps to standardize uh, and to have consistent uh, results. So we check the results with the quality of vision and also the higher order aberration, which is now a hot topic in ophthalmology, not only in cataract surgery, but in uh, refractive surgery also. And we found out that with femtolaser technology, the coverage of the posterior chamber lens by the anterior capsule is better. So the centration of the implanted lens is better and uh, the quality of vision and also the high order aberrations created uh, surgically uh, are less than compared to the manual uh, technology. So eventually the aim is to provide a better visual acuity and better quality of vision for our patients. Fake amplification is about 20 years old uh, worldwide and it was a huge step towards stability and uh, predictability and better results with our patients. And one day surgery became possible by this uh, new surgical technique. But in the last 20 years uh, not too many things has been changed uh, in this uh, technology. Of course, the corner wound became smaller and uh, there are some slight techniques which, ha which has been changed, but it's not a substantial change. During uh, our first research, there was no uh, OCT uh, uh, coupled uh, with the femtolaser. So now with the third generation of femtolaser, there is an inbuilt OCT which gives a very safe uh, procedure for us because then we know by micrometer uh, accuracy that where we are within the eye. So we can plan a safety distance from the posterior chamber and uh, posterior capsule and anterior capsule. So I think uh, possibly the imaging technology will be developed with high definition technology so we can assess even better the uh, density of the lens and uh, the uh, wound creation. Uh, we can plan, it will be a, a biplanar, uniplanar, triplanar or multiplanar corner wound and also for uh, the fragmentation we can use this technology better. I think uh, femtolaser will be coupled with other procedures within the eye. So uh, as we have it for uh, corner surgery for five, six years already, uh, and LASIK <coughs> almost exclusively is done uh, at the moment by the femtolasers and not the mechanical blades. Uh, I think uh, the femtolaser for cataract surgery will be coupled with the corner technology and possibly other technologies which can treat glaucoma, for example, then vitroretinal diagnostic and diseases and uh, possibly others which we do not know yet. So I predict that it will be a multiple use uh, femtolaser technology which will eventually change uh, our technology in ophthalmology. We are in the first step, so we need to have uh, been treated many eyes and many uh, others to contribute to this technology with new ideas and then I think eventually we, we will 
uh, have a change like uh, the fake homogenification change cataract technology. When I started 25 years ago, we still had the intracapsular technology, then the technology was shifted to the extracapsular technology, then the third time to the phaco amplification, and now this is the fourth shift uh, for uh, femtolaser technology in cataract surgery. So I'm really curiously waiting what will be the next uh, development in the next 20 years.